My name is David Sullivan, and I'm a professor at Pasco Hernandez State College. I teach with the paramedicine program. I also do a lot of guest speaking with the other health programs. And the topic that I wanted to share with my colleagues is tipping the scale with student engagement activities. And I'm going to get to the meaning of tipping and scale as I proceed through the presentation. But there's been some noted trends and weaknesses in teaching time management to students, intellectual openness, problem solving, and persistence. Now, obviously, when we're doing any educational efforts or any educational or we're on education and we're trying to get our messages across to students for quality of learning, we've got to have a vision and we've got to have a, a mission intact that we want to use is going to have the greatest impact. So using the Florida College System Vision and Mission, the Association of Florida and my own institution's vision and mission statements, it was very easy to align a focus on quality as a guide. Okay, there was a problem noted in academia, and anytime we're doing uh, presentations with our students, as educators, we always know that there's going to be some concerns. We've got excel very well. We've got some that are getting everything and they're doing okay, and we've got some that just don't get it. And some of the big problems noted in the institution that I've been working with is rote memory, getting good exams, and that's really only part of the uh, success story for these students. Keeping students actively engaged in the classroom is sometimes challenging, especially with technology when they're looking at their phones and they're not always attentive. Effectively managing time limitation during assessments. There's going to be a lot of different forms and types of assessments that we use, and we got to keep everything within a time constraint because our curriculum gets bigger and bigger, and we still end up with time to cover those topics that are very essential. Interacting with others of different points of view. We become very opinionated sometimes on issues that we're very passionate about, and we see this in the community as well, where students disagree and there's potential conflict that occurs so teaching them how to interact with each other is, is something that we've noted to be a really high priority problem solving skills based the methods not just because that's how we do it that's how I've seen it so I'm going to continue doing that way so we need to implement some problem solving skills and also persistence some students give up but as far as persistence and achieving academic excellence instead of just passing, that's a really big deal. So we want students to feel empowered, engage with what the content is, and actually be successful. David, I just wanted to let you know your audio is cutting in and out. So I'm not sure if you're moving away or towards the microphone or what's going on. But if you can just slow down a little bit and we'll okay. try to figure out what's going on here. Absolutely, and I think I fixed one of the problems right here. Okay, now some of the reasons for these topics in this problem slide that I've presented here, we're doing a quality enhancement overview at our institution, and a lot of common themes came up, and it aligns with these issues that I've just discussed, and I just want to repeat some of these key points with um, the topic that we're discussing here with these problems in academia, things noted in the classroom. Rote memory, good exam scores is only part of the assessment. We need to find creative and, and engaging activities that really bring out the essence of the students' abilities and knowledge. Keeping students actively engaged, managing time, really important because we have a very narrow time frame. Uh, interacting with others with different points of view. That's in reference to we all have our own opinions. Our students have their own opinions, and sometimes there's disagreement to the point of potential major conflict. So bringing everyone together and listening and sharing and coming to a collaborative type approach is very effective and very, and very important with this. Now, problem solving skills, very important. Some students are still having difficulty solving difficult and complex problems. The persistence in achieving excellence was also noted as an issue, not just passing. And unfortunately, some students still have the desire to just pass and meet the minimum requirements. Now, looking for the best 
possible solution for practices. Any institution that's looking for improvement has to sit for just a moment and think about what they're doing, where can they improve, listen to the constituents, listen to the students, try to figure out what the best impact is going to be for our educational time with our students. So regardless of the activities we're using, time management, intellectual openness, problem solving, and persistence. These are four high priority themes and topics that have evolved as we're interacting with students. So we want to help them be successful. So this time management relates to the goals and priorities established that optimize of time. Intellectual openness, using and reflecting on the views of others while exploring new ideas and being open to changes and being open to new ideas. Problem solving, uh, building upon and using critical thinking skills to react to and reflect upon situations or problems that need to be resolved. Mm -hmm. And problem solving skills seems to be a very important skill that employers want when students leave these programs and they're graduates and they become employees. That's one of the hot topics and one of the things that have come back to us from our constituent populations in the field and out in the communities. Persistence. The students continued efforts to achieve their academic goals, to be very successful. Don't give up. That's the important topic here. Now, building these successful activities. These activities can be used in the classroom, online, by tutors, by learning assistants, and these activities are relevant because it engages the students at their level and challenging them at the same time. These scenarios are real world. They implement the learning objectives and the goal. The assignments, regardless of the form of degree, have a time limit, and these activities actually encourage active participation from all, and we also hold the students accountable for accurate answers. They can't just make up answers, because we make students get up and justify, present to the class what their findings are, and share, and explain how they came to that. So we hold them accountable. Get their rationale for their decisions and make them explain how they came to that conclusion. Praising success and practicing often. These are positive things that we've noted that have made an impact. Now, wanting to find out what's going on with our students and how they interact with situations and problems really important. So one of the things that we did is we looked for ways to ask them. So surveys and questions during uh, introductory sessions for asking students how they Using you again, problems. David. Okay, I apologize. Um, is this better? Yeah, it's significantly better. Does this sound good, Claire? Okay. I apologize. I have no idea what's going on. I'm watching the microphone and it seems to be functioning properly. Okay, okay. Um, explaining thought, explaining thoughts on instructor and student intellectual openness in the classroom. Intellectual openness relates to sharing, listening, and interacting with others with different points of view. So we ask students up front in the introductory phase, what are the students' strategies for time management and meeting deadlines? And we also ask them, what are your strategies for persistence? How do you stay with it with everything going on in life and everything you're being faced with and challenges? How are you able to continue? What drives you? What makes you succeed? This one right here, we've got a little side shift here with the alignment, but what I'm going to show to you is an example, several examples of making a difference. In 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019, a series of examinations that evolved over time were utilized, and we were able to track complex topics that were being taught to some of our populations. We were able to track their grades and see the improvement. The one thing I'm going to point out is with this vascular and pathophysiology, 80% uh, being the minimum required for an example. Uh, over the years, as we started to engage more of these activities, we were able to see these scores increase up and through the 2018 and 2018 timeline. Um, it looks like 
when we were doing our comprehensive exams, uh, two separate major comprehensive exams and then a final, we noticed a significant trend and great improvement. So these were evolving as best practices as we were interacting with these activities and the students and bringing it all together. And one of the things we noticed is students seem to get the concepts and they're able to retain and implement those contexts in ongoing education as they take additional courses. Positive feedback. The instructor uh, peers and other teachers realizing there's positive results in students' academic achievement. Student responses overall noted as positive. Of course, there's going to be some students that don't like to be challenged. They just want to get through. We realize that. But overall, students really like to be engaged with real problems and examples. Administration noted with students in the classroom. Something's working because graduation rates can go up, uh, attitude and behavior, positive um, images from the students, meaning they felt good about attending here, they're proud of the institution they're a part of and they graduated from, so a lot of good things. Now after these uh, courses are done, we like to ask students, how well did we prepare you for solving problems? How effective were we in encouraging you to use intellectual openness in the classroom? And how effective were we in helping you develop your time management skills? And also persistence in meeting your educational goals. A lot of good feedback with these so far. Now, back to this topic of tipping the scale. We were really focused on active participation, retention of concepts, working together, resolving disagreements, and we saw many, and putting everything all together and synthesizing it. These areas had a heavy emphasis and they made a great impact. And some of the not being engaged and the students not getting and failing to succeed, those diminish. So this tip scale and their ability to use time management, intellectual openness, their problem solving, persistence, and all the time we were interacting with the students using these student-centered, Activities for their learning excellence seem to be a very good thing with very positive impact. Different ways of these uh, resources as an instructor who teaches online in hybrid and face to face, I use these activities throughout and we find very creative ways to alter them and change them so that they're effective and they put constraints on the patient and make, are the, uh, excuse me, being in the medical field, we talk patients. But with the student population, these activities can actually um, engage them, hold them accountable, and make them able to meet all the objectives we're trying to put within them. Now, when students and faculty are all together doing these uh, engagement activities, we're noticing positive attitude shift with the students. Weaker students tend to be paired with the stronger students. That's by design because we want a positive synergy and we want the weaker students to learn from the stronger ones and we want to see confidence being built. Concept understandings are increased, nation grades have increased, students are accountable for being there and actively participating. And active participation is one of the keys that we've noted to help us towards success. Now, Students engaged early, they continue to be engaged, they realize they have the ability to succeed, and they tend to stay in class and complete their educational goals. Now, usability and adaptability. Uh, these resources and these uh, assessment tools we use and these engagement activities, they apply to all disciplines, whether I'm doing a math type problem or an issue or a topic, natural science, social behavior, humanities, foreign language, uh, literacy, uh, healthcare programs, all of these activities can be modified and changed with the student learning outcomes and objectives from those disciplines integrated to engage the students. Also, impact on the marketing, public relations, and advocacy. Students who feel successful, they give a positive image and successful engagement activities have been yielding good results. The students are happy, they're positive, they're confident, and they're out there in the workforce, they're out there with the peers, 
and they're able to apply the relevance of their learning and activities and the confidence building out into the workforce. So it makes it look like we have a quality education program. And students were very positive about their educational experience. Now, it's very important that we engage students with a purpose. Busy work is not very popular. So when we engage students, they need to be the beginning of the courses, towards the middle of the courses, and towards the end, and throughout as available and as appropriate for those particular courses and disciplines. And we do multiple activities. And what we're trying to do is keep the momentum going so it has a positive, meaningful impact with a lot of thought-provoking and real-life scenario problem-solving. And it immersed us into these uh, environments where they're able to address these scenarios, problems, learn these life skills, and be able to build that confidence and go out there. Also, one of the things about student encouragement, I do, therefore I am, able to use time management effectively, able to be intellectually open to other points of view, and able to effectively solve problems, and able to be persistent in accomplishing my goals. And if we believe it, we can achieve it. And this is a true statement, and these are key points. If we emphasize to our students and keep that in the culture and in the environment, we have a very positive outcome with them. Also, bringing this whole thing together, this sea of opportunity, this theme came about because these student engagement activities help the teachers and the faculty and mentors or tutors monitor a student's learning, whether they're getting it or not. We're able to get feedback to improve what we're doing and how we're doing it. Does this work? Does this not work? And all these activities need to be addressed. Excuse me. All these activities should be designed to address key concepts that are relevant to what the students need to learn. And these four themes that we've been addressing are problem solving, intellectual openness, time management, and persistence. And that, my friends, is an overview of some successful activity that we've been evolving over many years. The, the topics and the content has evolved and changed and morphed, but it addresses some of the key clips and issues that we face as educators. And I think we're all in this together, and I think we have high hopes for our students and our student populations, whether we're a tutor, whether we're in the Academic Success Center, whether we're in the classroom, whether we're an administrator, regardless of who we are in academia, if we're interacting with students and teaching them, then we need to make sure that we're doing the best possible uh, educational practices that are out there. And on that note, I will end and I will take any questions you guys have. And uh, Claire, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you, David. I'm really curious if you could share an example of one of these activities that you do. Yes, and one of the examples I'm going to give you is a healthcare type um, scenario. And this is a very basic one. It's a very good example. Um, health students, for example, say paramedic students, and nursing students, or other allied health programs, for example, they need to understand health uh, conditions or uh, disorders. An example would be asthma. And what we have our patients do, we tell groups. We put them in a group of two or three or four, depending on the size of the class. And we may have perhaps uh, 15 different medical disorders. And with the asthma example, the students of two or three that are in the face-to-face version, they're given this patient, and we tell them, you are to build an asthma patient. What do they look like? What are the signs and symptoms? What are your uh, treatment considerations? What's going on? How did they get here? They are given 20 minutes to build that patient in a group of three, and they need to understand the four points that we've been talking about during this presentation. They need to integrate all those key concepts. They're held accountable to the time. They have to be persistent. And then with those three individuals in front of the class, and they have to take about three to five minutes, and they share back with us what they have as far as a patient. What does this patient look like? 
what needs to be done. Uh, they have to use proper medical terminology. Uh, they have to write a summary at the end with uh, proper English and proper grammar. And they have to be able to justify and give rationale for why they came up with all these examples of signs and symptoms and the pathophysiology behind it and they need to justify that's one of the examples that we found to be very effective as far as the education side of giving students real life problems in a small group with a specific timeline telling them they need to solve this problem but they need to summarize it using proper wording sentence structure of the sentences and they need to address those issues and address those problems. We've also done this in an online fashion as well, giving them a specific period of time and students are issued this assignment and they have to go in. And by the way, these assignments are modified and changed throughout the curriculum as needed by the instructors, but they have to keep the student learning objectives for that topic in integrated and also focus on these four key components that we've been discussing. So I think in the time frame that we're dealing with, I, I hope that's provided an example. Oh, thank you very much, David. If anybody else has questions for David, uh, you can jump into the chat box to ask them, or if you're on the phone, we should be able to unmute you. We'll give it one more minute. Thank you, David, very much for your presentation. If anybody still has a question, please do jump into the chat box or raise your hand to let us know that you're typing. All right. One if thing there... on the audio clear. Oh, we do Apologize. have. Apologize. Uh, this is David. I just want... may I may I say something for the benefit of the group, real quick. The uh, microphone icon for presenters, uh, it seems to be showing a good signal, and I think the sound was intermittent, and I have no idea why, so I just want to share that in case there's something that has to be addressed for the room. Uh, one of our um, audience members suggested that this was, in fact, a connection problem, and in other words, that you might have had poor speed where you were, um, and that that was the issue. And Scott wanted to share that he was thankful for the links. I, I'm guessing he's going to go back and do a little bit more uh, poking around at this. If there are any more questions, please feel free to jump on. In the meantime,